account from the massacre in the Great Temple. The blood of the warriors flowed like water and gathered into pools. The pools widened, and the stench of blood and entrails filled the air. The Spaniards ran into the communal houses to kill those who were hiding. They ran everywhere and searched everywhere. They invaded every room, hunting and killing. In the year 1519, a group of Spanish conquistadors made contact with the Aztec Empire, forming an uneasy relationship where they held their Aztec emperor captive. By 1520, the relationship deteriorated when Spaniards cut down Aztec where they stood during the celebration of the Feast of Toxcatl. Only a year later, the Aztec capital Tenochtitlan was sacked and its monuments destroyed. By 1532, a group of conquistadors under the leadership of Francisco Pizarro had ventured into the Inca Empire, heading toward and setting up in the town of Cajamarca. Here they awaited for the Inca Emperor to arrive. This is the story of their encounter on that fateful day. Tito Cruzi Yupanqui, the son of Manco Inca and Atahualpa Zenefu, on the initial reports given to Atahualpa on the Spanish entering Peru. They reported having observed that certain people had arrived in the land, people who were very different from us in custom and dress, and that they appeared to be Veracoches. This is the name we use to apply to the creator of all things. They named the people as such because they differed much from us in clothing and appearance, and because they rode very large animals with silver feet. The Indians saw them alone talking to white cloths, as a person would speak to another. Moreover, they called them Viracochas because of the stately appearance of their persons, and because each was so different from the other. And finally, because they saw them eat out of silver dishes and use elapas, which is the word for thunder, and by which they meant their guns. For they thought that the thunder they made came from the sky. Guaman Poma, a Peruvian chieftain. Tuar Indian eyes. The Spaniards looked as if they were shrouded like corpses, their faces covered with wool, leaving only the eyes visible. By November 15th of 1532, the Spanish reached the town of Cajamarca, sending an envoy to Atahualpa. The emperor himself would be arriving the next day. Accounts from Pizarro's companions. At noon, Atahualpa began to draw his men into approach. Soon we saw the entire plain full of Indians, halting periodically to wait for more Indians who kept filing out of the camp behind them. First came a squadron of Indians dressed in clothes of different colors, like a chessboard. They advanced, removing the straws from the ground and sweeping the road. Next came three squadrons in different dresses, dancing and singing. Then came a number of men with armor, large metal plates, and crowns of gold and silver. So great was the amount of furniture of gold and silver they bore. Eighty lords carried him on their shoulders, all wearing a very rich livery. Altawepa himself was richly dressed, with his crown on his head and a collar of large emeralds around his neck. Behind Altoeva came two litters and two hammocks, in which were some high chiefs, then several squadrons of Indians with crowns of gold and silver. These Indian squadrons began to enter the plaza to the accompaniment of great songs, and thus they occupied every part of the plaza. Governor Pizarro now sent Friar Vicente de Valverde to go speak to Altoeva. The friar thus addressed him. I am a priest of God, and I teach Christians the things of God, and in like manner 
I come to teach you. Guoman Poma. Antoepa's reply was that he could not change his belief in the sun, who was immortal, and in other Inca divinities. He asked Friar Vicente what authority he had on his own belief, and the friar told him it was written in the book which he held. The Inca then said, give me the book so it could speak to me. At last, he asked, why doesn't the book speak to me? Still sitting on his throne, he threw it on the ground. Accounts from Pizarro's Companions The friar returned to Pizarro shouting, Come out! Come out, Christians! Come out, these enemy dogs who reject the things of God! The governor then gave the signal to Candia, who began to fire off the guns. At the same time, the trumpets were sounded, and the armored Spanish troops, both cavalry and infantry, sailed forth out of their hiding places straight into the masses of Andar and Indians, crowded in the square. Giving the Spanish battle cry, Santiago! We had placed rattles on the horses to terrify the Indians. The booming of the guns, and the blowing of the trumpets, and the rattles of the horses threw the Indians into panic and confusion. Then, because the people began to shout, the Spaniards killed them all with their horses, their swords, and their arquebuses, just as if they were slaughtering sheep. Roman Palma. The horsemen began to fire their arquebuses and to get skirmish, and the soldiers began to kill Indians like ants. With the fight of arquebuses, the noise of horse bells, and the sight of arms of men who had never before been seen, and with the plaza being so full of Indians, the walls of the enclosure of the plaza of Cajamarca came falling down. The Indians were killed, between being squeezed, being stepped on, and being trampled by horses. Many people died, so many Indians they could not be counted. Chase those with the fancy clothes. Don't let any escape. Spear them! The Spaniards fell upon them and began to cut them to pieces. The Indians were so filled with fear that they climbed on top of one another, forming mounds and suffocating each other. Since they were unarmed, they were attacked without danger to any Christian. The cavalry rode them down, killing and wounding, and following in pursuit. The infantry made so good an assault on those that remained that in a short time, most of them were put down to the sword. The governor himself took his sword and dagger, entered the thick of Indians with the Spaniards who were with him, and with great bravery, reached Otoeva's litter. Although we killed the Indians who held the litter, others at once took their places and held it aloft. And in this manner, we spent a long time in overcoming and killing the Indians. Finally, seven or eight Spaniards on horseback spurred on their horses, rushed upon the litter and from one side, and with great effort, they heaped it over to its side. And in that way, Altuweipa was captured. Once the dust had settled, the mighty conquistadors of Europe were on the verge of toppling the largest American empire to have existed. Glory and riches awaited them after the stunning, decisive victory of Cajamarca. But what was it that secured the victory that day, and soon across the Americas? Was it the lightning held in the hands of these possible Veracochas, creating clouds of smoke? The mass of llamas they rode none had ever seen before that trampled countless that day in Cajamarca. The frightful sounds of the instruments of these corpse-shrouded men, the silver armor that exposed only their eyes. The mass panic and confusion as a result of all these things. The unknown plague that wiped the previous emperor and his court, destabilizing the empire, or simply by the Spanish accounts, God's will. <laughs>